three poems. Uh, one is made mainly about uh, safety or shelter, and one attaches to fear and dread, and one um, sends up a little mode of hope. Like a prisoner of soft words, we walk under the wires and the birds resettle. We know where we're going, but have not made up our mind which way we will take to get there. If we pass by the palmist, she can read our wayward lines. We may drop things along the way that substantiate our having been here. We will not be able to transmit any of these feelings verbatim. By the time we reach the restaurant, one of us is angry. Here, a door gives into a courtyard overlooking a ruined pool. We touch the spot on our shirt where the ink has leaked. The lonely outline of the host is discerned near an unlit sconce, something about an oar leaning against a wall. As guests, we are authorized not to notice. We lack verisimilitude, but we press on with intense resolve. We are forced to admit we cannot reproduce the smell of the linden, but we can tell you when we are standing in the sphere of its fluency, its mystery, its heart-shaped leaves, its special white honey, the precarious fabric of its protection. We appear less posthumous against the silver exposures. When the wind picks up, the soundtrack isn't audible. Like the ghost of a carrier pigeon. In a couple of hours, darkness will throw its blanket over the scene. She will pretend to read a mystery. The mower and hammering will cease. The bees leave the Andromeda, and then so much has been spent constructing a plausible life, she did not hear the engines of descent run down. Some still attempt to cover the skull with the wire of their hair. Others shave everything instead. A solitary relives the pleasure of releasing his bird. There is no sacrosanct version. There is only time. Even now, if someone yells avalanche, she has one. Thoughts shudder against the ribs and go still. Soon the sun would be out running around in her car with a sore throat. Soon the decibels commence killing off hair cells. She checks to see if the phone is charged and then the ones responsible for slaying the dreamer are mostly in the ground, but the ones responsible for slaying the dream suffer only metabolic syndrome. Even now, now that her supply of contact lenses has dwindled, she was refusing to sing the Walmart song. <laughs> the bees would be back, and then all efforts at reconciliation aside, even if everyone exchanged germs, happiness is only for amateurs. I just dropped two lines of that at the end. I don't know why, I just they seem to ambiguous. Petition for replenishment. We do not mean to complain. We know how it is. In older, even sadder cultures, the worst possible sorts have been playing hot and cold with people's lives for much longer. Like Perot says, we'll all have baboon hearts one of these days. We wintered with ample fuel and real tomatoes. We were allowed to roam Sniffing and chewing at the tufted crust, we were let to breathe. That is, we respirated. Now the soft clocks have gorged themselves on our time. Yet as our hair blanches and comes out in hanks, we can tell it is nearly spring. 
The students shed their black coats on the green. We begin to see shade. Lo, this is the breastbone's embraceable light. We are here, still breathing and constellated.